hackers are spying on your phone calls, your text messages, all that, and you didn't even know it. Why? Because of something very scarily easy that you did that gave hackers an extreme advantage. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the easiest ways that hackers can hack your phone and see all of your private data from your bank accounts, all that stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So we will begin with malicious apps, right? One of the most prevalent methods hackers use is tricking users into downloading malicious apps. These apps, you know, may appear legitimate, but can contain hidden malware that can, you know, log keystrokes or steal passwords to your most privileged information and other sensitive data, access your camera, microphone, and other phone features, send data to hackers in the background, you know, like, you know, so always download apps only from official app stores and check reviews carefully okay <laughs> now phishing attacks so phishing attacks on phones are a common and effective method very easily uh if executed right by a hacker and it, it allows hacker, hackers to gain unauthorized access to personal information now there are different types of phishing attacks so i don't want you to think oh yeah, yeah as long as i don't click anything i'm good no you're wrong so <laughs> you have sms phishing right S smishing is also what it's called uses text messages to trick users into clicking malicious links yeah but you already said that mark but that's not all uh downloading malware providing sensitive information these messages often appear to come from legitimate sources like banks or popular services oh so you mean to tell me that wasn't my bank yes i am telling you <laughs> so email phishing while traditionally associated with computers email phishing also targets mobile users attackers send emails that look like they're from trusted sources so the emails contain malicious links or attachments please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you like this video if you appreciate the content if you feel like you're learn learning something new take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button so now Opening these on a phone can compromise the device. You have social media phishing. Attackers may use fake social media profiles or posts to lure users to malicious websites, trick them into downloading in, you know, infected apps, solicit personal information through direct messages. So now, how phishing attacks work? Now remember, we have AI, so it's not like you know, it's not like it's something easily that you can just see. Deception. The attacker creates a convincing message that appears to be from a trusted source. Remember, they have AI, they can fake things. Urgency. Often the message creates a sense of urgency or curiosity to prompt immediate action. Malicious action. The user is prompted to click a link to a fake website, download an infected file or app, provide sensitive information directly. Now remember, even cybersecurity experts get bamboozled by clicking on phishing links. So. They're really good at what they do, the hackers. Data theft. Once the user takes action, the attacker can steal login credentials, install malware on the device, gain access to personal or financial information. There's also sophisticated techniques. What we talked about, what I said a little bit earlier, modern phishing attacks on phones have become more advanced because of AI-driven attacks. Attackers use AI to create more convincing and personalized messages. You have deep fakes, voice cloning, and video manipulation can be used to impersonate trusted individuals. You have multi-channel attacks. Fishers may combine SMS, email, and voice calls for a more convincing scam. Now, in regards to prevention, when it comes specifically to phishing, be skeptical of unexpected messages, even if they appear to be from known sources. Avoid clicking links or downloading attachments from unsolicited messages, right? Verify re requests for sensitive information through official channels. Keep your phone's operating system and apps updated. Now, use security software designed for mobile devices, okay? You're gonna wanna make sure that that is the case. So by understanding how these attacks work and staying vigilant, you can significantly reduce the risk of falling victim to phone-based phishing attempts. The next one is unsecured Wi-Fi networks, right? Yeah, you, you were sipping your pumpkin latte at Starbucks and boom, they got you right there. You can't even you can't even have coffee in peace. So now, <laughs> public Wi-Fi networks can indeed increase the risk of your phone being hacked, uh, you know, or your data being compromised. Right? Public Wi-Fi networks are often unsecured or have minimal security measures, making them attractive targets for hackers. When you connect to these networks, your device and data become more vulnerable to various attacks. 
What are those common attack methods? Hackers can exploit public Wi-Fi in several ways. You have the man in the middle attack where attackers, you know, they could intercept communication between your device and the network, potentially accessing your emails, usernames, passwords, and other sensitive data. The next one we have is fake Wi-Fi hotspots. Cyber criminals may set up malicious networks that mimic legitimate ones, tricking users into connecting and exposing their data. There is packet sniffing. This technique allows hackers to capture and analyze data packets transmitted over unencrypted networks, potentially revealing sensitive information. Next, we have DNS spoofing, where attackers can manipulate DNS settings to redirect your internet traffic to malicious websites. Uh, so, and you know, the risk to your data, right? When using public Wi-Fi, you risk exposing yourself, exposing your data. All kinds of things what you know you you risk exposing your login credentials to sensitive apps and sensitive information financial information personal data your browsing history and when it comes to protecting yourself specifically to this kind of cyber attack uh you can take these steps right you want to use a vpn also known as a virtual private network uh, that encrypts your internet traffic making it harder for hackers to intercept your data uh, you know they the hackers they want easy easy targets right you know if they got to go jump through hoops and all that to get you then your likelihood of being hacked is even lower verify your network authenticity always confirm the legitimacy of your public wi-fi network before connecting avoid sensitive transactions refrain from accessing sensitive accounts or making financial transactions while on public wi-fi keep wi-fi off when not in use Turn off your Wi-Fi when you're not actively using it to prevent automatic connections to potentially unsafe networks. Use HTTPS, right? Ensure websites you visit use HTTPS encryption, especially when entering sensitive information. While public Wi-Fi can be convenient, it's important to be aware of the risk and take appropriate precautions to protect your device and personal information. Now, the next one is uh, SIM swapping. That's another kind of cyber attack. In this attack, hackers convince your mobile carrier to transfer your phone number to a new SIM card they control, allowing them to receive your calls and texts, reset passwords for your online accounts. So use strong account security with your carrier and enable additional verification for number transfers. Now there's also Bluetooth hacking. This is, this is, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if this will ever like go away because this is this is remote and remote hacking is it's really a thing now right and it's been a thing for a while so bluetooth hacking is where hackers can exploit open bluetooth connections to connect to your phone without authorization that's the probably the, the reason why it's 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 most liked by hackers and access your you know data on your device install malware so you want to keep your bluetooth turned off when not in use especially in public areas by being aware of these common attack vectors and taking precautions like using security software keeping your phone updated and being cautious about apps and messages you can significantly reduce your risk of phone hacking now do you think androids or iphones are more secure let me know in the comments below so uh you know you there are ways you can protect your phone from being hacked uh you can lock your phone right set a strong password or pin of at least six digits to unlock your device enable biometric authentication like fingerprint or facial recognition for added security keep your software updated right regularly update your phone's operating system and apps to patch security vulnerabilities enable automatic updates when possible right use encryption ensure your phone's storage is encrypted this is usually enabled you know by default on your devices be cautious with apps only download apps from official stores like google play or the app store check reviews and permissions before installing now again we discussed it but i'm gonna say it again because this is so this is key of you know i would avoid public wi-fi right use a vpn when connecting to public wi-fi networks to encrypt your data be wary of phishing. Don't click on suspicious links or download attachments from unknown sources. Verify unexpected messages from banks or companies, right? You're going to also want to enable security features like two-factor authentication on important accounts connected to your phone. Turn on Find My Device, right? Enable features like Find My Phone or Find My Device to locate 
lock or wipe your phone remotely if lost or stolen, install security software, consider using reputable mobile antivirus slash security apps for additional protection, okay? And manage your data, okay? Back up regularly, back up your data, you know, back up your phone's data to the cloud, okay? On your com or on your computer. That's what I have for today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video so far, and if you learned something new, if you appreciate this content, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Also, please put your, com your comments uh, or opinions in the comment section below. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you on the next video.